third line of defensive mechanisms the peculiar characteristic is the immunity is specific that means this immunity is responsible for differentiation between self and non self self means body substances and non self means the foreign substances these foreign substances are called as antigens so we have seen that specific immunity is divided into two categories humoral immunity and cell mediated immunity so in order to understand this immunity that means whenever any foreign substance enters in our body body gives the response in the form of production of antibodies and production of sensitized t cells production of antibodies and sensitized t cells is called as immune response so immune response involves production of antibodies and production of sensitized t lymphocytes this means that the type of white blood cells mainly involved in third line of defense are t cells and b cells so in order to understand the immune response let us see what are the organs which are involved in the immunity or immune system these organs as we have seen yesterday are divided into two category primary lymphoid organs and secondary lymphoid organs the function of primary lymphoid organs is synthesis of white blood cells red blood cells or thrombocytes and maturation of t lymphocytes that is a function of primary lymphoid organ in our body we have two primary lymphoid organs first one is bone marrow bone marrow is the tissue that fills all the cavities of long bones which is responsible for the synthesis of blood cells thymus is another primary lymphoid organ which is responsible for the synthesis of t lymphocytes that means b lymphocytes are produced in bone marrow and t lymphocytes are in thymus then secondary lymphoid organs are those in which immune response is developed that is there is production of antibodies and production of t lymphocytes so there are many secondary lymphoid organs which are situated in our body which we have seen yesterday so that is the site for generation of immune response humoral immunity we have been discussing yesterday it is b cell mediated immunity so there are millions of b cells we are having in our body whenever any foreign substance enters in our body a specific type of b cell it identifies that particular antigen with the help of receptor and this specific type of b cell undergoes activation further it undergoes proliferation and then differentiation into plasma cells which then secretes antibodies some of these b lymphocytes get differentiated into memory b cells further these antibodies are responsible for several functions that means how exactly these antibodies are responsible for elimination of foreign substances or microorganisms so there are three functions of antibodies first one is neutralization antibodies bind to pathogens toxins viruses bacteria protozoa fungi and many more different types of organisms and it causes it blocks its activity like it blocks its entry into several tissues it prevents or it eliminates its further growth or entry into the different tissues that is why it is called as neutralization here you can see in the diagram viruses virus is been bound by antibodies around so that 
now this virus doesn't have sites for its binding to the different host cells this is how the virus is neutralized then a toxin produced by bacterium clostridium diphtheri is called as diphtheria toxin which is responsible for life threatening symptoms so this toxin is if the antibodies are there these antibodies will bind to this toxin and it will prevent this toxin it will prevent the activity of this toxin this is how the neutralization occurs in case of other antigen second one is antigens bound by antibodies are easily engulfed by phagocytic cells so when antigen and binds to antibodies then the complex is called as antigen antibody complex such complexes means after neutralization these antigen antibody complexes can be easily engulfed by phagocytic cells and further leads to their destruction as we have seen in case of phagocytosis this process is called as opsonization this opsonization is like this you can see that this is antigen antibody complex pathogen is trapped by antibodies and further this antigen antibody complex is then engulfed by macrophages that leads to their further destruction third function is activation of complement pathway we have seen that complements are lytic proteins which are responsible for the killing of bacterial cells so antibodies bound to the antigens activate the complement pathways that cause lysis of microbial cell that means these antigen antibody complexes are also responsible for activation of complement so these lytic proteins they arrange on the bacterial cell wall and then they lead to formation of holes or pores as a result whatever the nuclear content is there cytoplasm it is released out ultimately that leads to the death of organism these are the functions of antibodies these are the functions of humoral immunity second type of immune response or immunity is cell mediated immunity in this case t cells t lymphocytes are involved so there are several classes of t cells first one is th cell which is called as t helper cell so the function of t helper cell is these cells they help b cells for the production of antibodies we have seen the process of production of antibodies by b lymphocytes the initial step is b cells first recognizes the antigen and later on the second step is its activation so this activation process it requires help from t lymphocytes suppose this is the b cell which is which has recognized an antigen and further it needs to be activated by t lymphocytes like this so these t helper cells they bind to this b lymphocyte we call this b lymphocyte as sensitized b lymphocyte as a result of that these t cells they secrete chemicals and these chemicals are responsible for activation of b lymphocytes so this is how after the release of release of cytokines b cells they get activated after activation it undergoes proliferation and further differentiation as we have seen earlier into plasma cells and then these plasma cells secrete antibodies this is how the role of t helper cell can be explained second type of t lymphocyte is cytotoxic t lymphocyte abbreviated as tc it is responsible for the killing of virally infected cell nowadays in covid 19 situation 
we sh- we will we should be able to understand the role or importance of this t c cell in the killing of uh, corona virus infected cells in the respiratory tissues this is how it happens so this is the target cell say for example this is the cell which is infected with viruses virus is an intracellular parasite so it grows inside the cell so therefore antibodies are not useful in order to kill these viruses because these viruses are hidden or they are trapped inside the cell antibodies cannot enter inside the cell that is the point to be remembered that humoral immunity or antibodies are only effective against extracellular pathogens extracellular antigens whereas t c cells are effective against effective against intracellular pathogens so if this is the target cell which expresses certain uh, certain receptor molecules on these cells for example class 1 mhc molecule this is then bound with the help of receptors it is bound by the tc cell tc cell it is a type of cd8 cell so as a result of binding uh this tc cell releases the enzymes or the contains onto this virally infected cell that leads to destruction of this cell and that leads to the formation of pores and this is how after the killing the tc cell is released and the infected cell it dies that is the role of cytotoxic t lymphocytes which is important in viral infections another one is t d cell t delayed type hypersensitivity cell which is responsible for activation of macrophages for the digestion and killing of ingested microbes sometimes during the process of phagocytosis the initial steps are attachment to the foreign particle and engulfment after engulfment there is formation of phagosome then the next step is phagosome should fuse with lysosome but sometimes for this fusion process these macrophages needs activation and this activation is given by td cells so that is the role of td cells activation of macrophages for active phagocytosis suppose this is the macrophage we can see the phagosome in which red colored wire shaped organisms are there and uh, in white vacuole then you have this red colored vacuoles these are lysosomes so already we can see that this macrophage has engulfed the microorganisms but the next step hasn't been happened so in order to perform the next step that is fusion of phagosome to lysosome these macrophages needs and assistance from you can see this is the phagosome it needs assistance from the another type of cell that is td cell so td cell it is also abbreviated as th1 cells so as a result of this this td cell it releases chemicals called as cytokines and these cytokines causes the activation of these macrophages activation leads to the now you can see the fusion of phagosome with lysosome this is how td cells help the macrophages 
to digest the pathogen then the next one is t suppressor cell t suppressor cells are involved in the regulation of immune response so whatever we have seen so far role of role of uh, b cells and role of t cells so there has to be some regulation that means once the production of antibodies starts how long it should continue it should stop after some time or how long the production of tc cells continue how long the production of th cells continue so there has to be some control mechanism to t suppressor cells as the name indicates it suppresses the immune response that means they are involved in regulation or control of immune response that is about humoral immunity and cell mediated immunity next one next part that we study in immunology is immunological disorders immune response we have seen so far is beneficial for the removal of pathogen sometimes this immune response may be harmful if this immune response is raised or generated against our own body cells then this condition is called as hypersensitivity this is also called as allergy sometimes this immune response may not be generated against the pathogen and this is called as immuno deficiency that means there is no resistance power so that leads to immuno deficiency so hypersensitivity or allergy it is the immune response generated against harmless antigens that means it is not generated against the pathogen the immune response is generated harmless antigens say for example the chalk powder or the dust particle that we inhale so sometimes we may get allergy to that particular dust powder or sometimes there may be allergy of penicillin antibody so penicillin is not a pathogen penicillin is harmless but sometimes in some individuals injection of this penicillin it leads to generation of immune response and that immune response is harmful for our body so for examples these types of harmless antigens are dust particles drugs foreign proteins plant materials and animal products the examples of allergic diseases are asthma farmers lungs and hemolytic disease of newborn tuberculosis and leprosy immunodeficiency means inability of person to generate immune response that protects us from pathogenic microbes in this case the person may not be able to produce antibodies t cells or both such individuals are highly susceptible for infections then another section in immunology is diagnostic immunology as the word indicates diagnostic this means that there is use of antigens and antibodies in the diagnosis of diseases or infections so immunologic reactions means antigen antibody reactions one point is very important that we have learned third line of defensive mechanism is specific this specificity is due to the specificity between antigens and antibodies antigens and t lymphocytes specific type of antibodies can bind to only specific type of antigen for example antibodies generated against polio virus will only bind to polio virus only it will not bind to some other type of antigen that is called as specificity so this specificity is very important in the diagnosis of diseases there are two types of reactions which are useful 
for the diagnosis of diseases and these reactions are two types of reactions that occur between antigen and antibody if the reaction is visible so these two reactions are precipitation and agglutination so there are various types of antigens antigens means disease causing microorganisms bacteria fungi protozoa viruses and different types of antibodies these are the antibodies which are produced after the entry of pathogen in the body so antigens and antibodies both are the indicators of infection so if the person is infected with a coronavirus then there are two possibilities that the person is having those viruses in his or her body that means there is presence of antigen and the another possibility is following the entry of this coronavirus then it leads to the formation of antibody so the person who is exposed to this coronavirus infection must be having antibodies in his body so the indications are both whether the person is suffering from covid-19 or not either presence of antigens or presence of antibodies so both can be detected by using this diagnostic immunological kits first reaction is precipitation reaction we are not going into the too much details of precipitation reactions and second one is agglutination reaction both these reactions are useful for detection of antigens and antibodies these are the several examples of agglutination reactions hemagglutination elisa ria fluorescent antibody technique complement fixation test the tests which are based on antigen antibody reactions are called as serological test serology means study of serum serum is a component of blood if you collect the blood in uh, uh, means after the collection of blood outside the body then if you collect it in a vial after some time what will happen that blood will coagulate and after coagulation small amount of fluid which is released out of this clot that part is called as serum so it is a watery part of blood that is serum and this serum contains antibodies and the antigen to be detected so that is why this is called as serology so it is what is done in serology is detection of antigens with antibodies or detection of antibodies with standard antigen this is very important detection of unknown antigen with standard antibodies and detection of antibodies with standard antigen both ways are possible patient's blood or tissue or swab is collected and it is mixed with test reagent so i'll give you the reference of current uh, antigen based test for the detection of coronavirus infection covid 19 disease so the a very uh, fast this is a very fast test so within few minutes you will get the result so that antigen based test is like this so what is done you have seen that the swabs is been collected from the patient's nasal cavity then that swab is uh, immersed into saline water and then that saline water is ready for the antigen test or sometimes there may be collection of blood so either it may be blood or the swab saline so 
what is that swab is supposed to contain or what is that blood supposed to contain it is supposed to contain the virus and these viruses corona viruses are detected with the help of standard known antibodies we call it as test reagent so if there is presence of this virus in the sample it will be bound by antibodies and there will be antigen antibody reaction if there is antigen antibody reaction then this indicates that there is presence of coronavirus and therefore we can diagnose that the patient is infected with corona virus another example is detection of hepatitis a so generally hepatitis a is diagnosed by identifying antiviral antibodies present in the body so this is the example of uh, diagnosis of hepatitis a disease by identifying antibodies with standard antigen this is the opposite case so both ways are possible on the other hand hepatitis b is diagnosed by identifying viral antigens from viral code so that is what happens in case of covid 19 diagnosis we can see the example of this kind of reactions see this that patient serum is been collected that means the patient's blood so that patient's blood may contain viruses so we call them as viral antigens then these this sample is mixed with standard antibodies so which are already purified and we have that in our laboratory in pure form standard antibodies these standard antibodies are known to bind to specific antigen so when this is mixed with antibodies then if the antigen is present antibodies are going to attach or bind to this antigen and there will be formation of antigen antibody complex formation of antigen antibody complex it indicates that the patient is infected with virus second type is diagnosis with the help of antibodies so in the similar fashion patient serum is collected which is supposed to contain antiviral antibodies and then like earlier one it is mixed with standard antigen in the earlier case it was detection of antigen with the help of standard antibodies and this is the case in which detection of antibodies with standard antigen so uh, it is mixed and if due to specificity if there is formation of antigen antibody complex then we can say that the patient is suffering from the virus infection